Welcome to Deadly Dames and I thought after doing the 31 day challenge for Halloween which I really did enjoy, I really enjoyed watching all those films doing a kind of mini chat and review about them and then sort of having really good conversations with all you amazing YouTubers out there that, that sort of came back and spoke about the films that you guys have been watching, I, I love doing that. So I decided that with me trying to tackle my massive big huge to be watched pile um, that I would kind of continue doing. It's obviously not a 31 day of, of Halloween challenge. It's going to be a me watching my to be watch pile and then sort of chatting about it and saying what I thought about the films. So I've managed to get through three, three off of God knows how many's over there. And I thought I would kind of go over what I thought about these movies and um, the good and the bad. So up first is Dark Ride. So I actually picked this film up from the pound shop. The main reason I picked it up is because it was by the producers of Saw, and I love Saw, especially the first one. And the storyline on the back sounded okay. So, it is very cliche, the storyline. So, basically, it's about a group of kids who are going away for a weekend of drinking, dope smoking and partying. Oh, what does that sound like? A million slasher films that are out there. And in the meanwhile, there's a mental institution carnival killer who escapes. And it, it, says, it says six college friends... It's not actually six, it's actually um, five in the pick of a hitchhiker. So let's get rid of what the back of this is about and I'll tell you a wee bit about the film, make it easier. So basically this movie is about a group of five friends, don't care about any of them, there's not one single character who I actually really cared about in this, who decide that they want to go away for a weekend of, as it said, partying and drinking and blah blah blah. Now, first off I'd like to say that it, from the way that they, they do this film, there's actually appears to have been two previous relationships. So the two girls obviously proves they had relations with two of the guys. Now, maybe they remained friends, but I'm not really sure why they were going away for a weekend together. Why would you with exes, especially when it appeared to have ended very badly? They, um, they pick up a hitchhiker. Sounds very Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it was. Um, and they find a leaflet about this haunted ghost train ride which has been closed down for years with two, because this carnival killer had killed and butchered two twin girls there years ago and made them part of the attraction. He was obsessed with making them part of the attraction and uh, he went to a mental institution. So the sub storyline is this guy in a mental institution, the carnival killer, who is uh, being taunted by his guards and carers and then he kills him and escapes very much Rob Zombie's Halloween. So... Then you've got these kids again, you don't care about any of them, they're actually all arseholes, so you really just want them to die. Now, I don't mind a slasher film where you, you don't care about the characters and you want them to die, but I much prefer a slasher film where I at least care about one of them. I mean, how can you enjoy a movie when you don't really care about, you're rooting for no one, not even your final girl, and that's what happened in this film, so... What I enjoyed about it was that it, it did follow just a simple slasher storyline, so it was very easy to watch. I didn't really have to concentrate too much, and in fact, I think I was probably doing about three or four other things at the same time as watching this movie. I enjoyed that part. What I disliked about this movie is there was nothing original at all about it. I didn't care about any of the characters. I didn't care when they died. It is very bloody, which is good. That's what a slasher film should be, is a lot of blood and gore. And some of the deaths were quite entertaining. Um, but I just didn't believe in the characters. And even the twists at the end, which I think they thought was some massive twist in the plot. I didn't care. By the time it got to that twist, I was like, well, I don't really care. Plus, I, you kind of guessed it anyway. Would I watch Dark Ride again? No. That's the easiest way to put it. I'm not going to watch this film again. It was worth one watch. It was definitely worth the one pound that I paid for it. But it's definitely be going to be going into my, my trade-in pile of movies. Um, how would I rate it? I'd probably rate it... If I was rating it out of 10, I'd probably rate it like 3 out of 10. Um, and that's me being generous. In fact, you know, I'd probably maybe... Yeah, 3 out of 10. And that's mainly because they used plenty of blood. Plenty of blood and gore. But for storyline, acting, originality, atmosphere, soundtrack... All the things that I love about horror films, uh, this movie didn't really have any of them, so it's definitely going into my trade-in bag. Then up, next movie I got off my watch list was 
Bite. Now, I was actually really looking forward to watching Bite because I always find it very interesting when you read about a movie uh, in magazines where people have said, oh, this movie made audience members pass out or audience members throw up because it always makes me instantly go, well, you know something, no movie has ever made me want to pass out or throw up. There's certainly been plenty of movies that have made me, you know, gross out, but never go that far. So when they say that this, this any movie's had that effect on people, I instantly want to see it. Because I want to know what all the fuss is about. And I know it's a market employee, but I just want to see it to see if it's really as disgusting as people make it out to be. Now to me, Bite, now maybe, maybe the reason why I didn't think it was as good as everyone else made it out to be is because I just watched David Cronenberg's The Fly as part of my Halloween challenge. And this movie is very similar to The Fly. Take away the whole scientist aspect, um, and it's very similar to what happens to the character in The Fly. And it's quite similar to what happens to the character in Contagion, which I really enjoyed. So the movie's basically about a bunch of girls going on uh, one last holiday um, Hindu for the main character because she's going to get married. And the main character gets a bit abroad, I can't even remember what country they went to now, it's obviously how much I took it in, and when she comes back, you get to see she starts transforming into a kind of insect-like thing that's laying all these little legs everywhere. On top of the transformation that she's actually going through, you get to see sort of, I'm guessing it's supposed to be character development, but I really, again, I, I really didn't care too much for any of these characters. In Contagion, you, you felt really sorry for the lead character and in for The Fly, obviously, you felt really sorry for the lead character and for Gina Davis's character because you believed in them, you believed in that they actually did care about each other. In this one, I didn't believe that she cared about her fiancé, I didn't care that her fiancé cared about her, I didn't care about her friends. I mean, if you watch, I don't want to give too much away if you decide to watch it, but her friends, especially one of them, she's a complete arsehole what she does to her in this. So I, I really didn't feel for anybody when they kicked it in this film and uh, the effects are good. As I said, I may, maybe maybe I'm being harsh on it because I literally just watched The Fly and if you're going to do a movie which is similar to The Fly, you you got to try a little bit harder in my opinion. I mean, The Fly, the effects, the storyline, the characters, the acting, the atmosphere... I mean, everything about that movie is phenomenal, and it's the same with Contagion, like, the acting might not have been right up there with Contagion, but I really did feel sorry for that character, I believed in her, I felt her pain, I do not feel this character's pain, and, I mean, a lot of the, the movie, she, a lot of the time I just kept thinking, Christ, if that was me, I'd have been at the doctor within five minutes of, you know, the fact that I had a great big gaping hole in my leg, and it was starting to get a little bit gooey, time to go to the doctor, you know, it's time to go and find out what the hell that's all about, but in, in this movie, she she doesn't go, I mean, at least in Contagion, she goes to the doctor, it might be a bit late on for them to, to fix what's going on with her, but at least she actually goes to the doctor, I mean, even the, the end sequence, I think it was supposed to kind of, I don't know, I don't, I don't really get the end sequence, I mean, a whole load of bugs fly out of him, like the fiancé, but I just didn't, it didn't buy it. The, the movie didn't sell to me. I think to do a movie... I think if you wanted to watch a movie about someone who's bit by an insect and goes through a painful transformation emotionally and physically, you'd be better off by Masters of the... Uh, Masters of the Universe? No, that's completely wrong. By Masters of Horror. Watch Masters of the Universe if you want. I love it. But yeah, by Masters of Horror and watching Lucky McGee's Sick Girl because this movie is a sort of pure version of Lucky McGee's Sick Girl. Will I watch Bite again? No. I'm not going to watch Bite again. It's going to go into the trade-in pile. Would I recommend that you watch Bite? Well, yeah, I think everybody should really judge a movie for themselves. But personally, if it was me, I would stick to The Fly, Contagion and Sick Girl because this movie was pretty much all three of them put into one, but all three of them were far better movies than this one. Don't really get what all the hype was about. <coughs> Excuse me. There was nothing... In this movie that turned to my stomach, not once. So, I would stick to the fly, just watch that. And then the third movie, I'm so sorry, I keep, every time I do this, I keep, I start coughing. I'm so sorry. <coughs> the last movie I watched was Lost After Dark. Now, this movie was very cliche as well. 
However, what I really did enjoy about Lost After Dark, uh, in fact, you know, I'll tell you a wee bit of the storyline first of all. So, this movie is about um, a group of teenagers. Now, they're not actually best friends. Basically, they, there's a, a jock which is being tutored by a good girl, and she kind of lets it slip to him that her family own this cabin, and they decide to go away for the weekend together. So, it's a typical storyline that most horror movies go down and on the way to the cabin their van breaks down and they're stranded so they end up finding a farmhouse and inside this farmhouse there's loads of horrible things so typical start to any sort of slasher film but what taking aside the fact that it's very very similar to lots of lots of slasher film storylines what I really really enjoyed about this movie is that it turned the classic like stereotype and, stip- uh, and stereotypical format of slasher movies kind of on its head because the goody two shoes girl who you would expect to be you know the virgin you know the final girl and if you were to follow the scream rules anyway you would expect her to be the final girl she dies first sorry I know that's a bit of a spoiler so if you don't want to hear that rewind <laughs> I probably should have put spoiler don't listen to this bit but it's a review so you know if it's a review there might be some spoilers but she kicks it first and then the kind of jock guy who you expect to be like the final guy he's next so you actually end up with all the arseholes that you're so used to in slasher films seeing die first being the ones that are left alive later i really i really really enjoyed that in this film i really enjoyed that they tried something different they didn't follow follow the sorry follow the path that so many other slasher films have done before them and, and think, you know what, we have to have the good girl survive until the end because let's face it, see if it was real life, I really don't think there would be a format to how people die, whether they're good or bad. I think they would just die in whatever way the killer happens to find them. And that's what I quite liked in this movie. The killer, he, he didn't really bring anything to it. He was just a guy running about killing people. And even when they tried to sort of introduce the, the backstory, it wasn't really the most the world's most interesting backstory. I really loved that Robert Patrick turned up in this for however long that he did, and they, he's not in it very long. Um, what I did like though is that all the people who you think is coming to save the day, and again, I'm so sorry this is a spoiler, but I have to say it because it's the thing that I really liked about it. <laughs> they, they, they didn't help in any sort of way, which I thought was great as well. So, um, will I watch Lost After Dark again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually going to watch Lost After Dark again because I actually really did enjoy that this movie did something different. The acting was quite good. Um, the atmosphere was quite good. The effects were quite good. Um, I genuinely did enjoy watching Lost After Dark and um, it is a film that I would recommend if you are like me and you've seen hundreds of slasher films and you want to see something that tries something a little bit different, try this one and see what you think about it. So... Yeah, that's all the films that um, I've watched off my to be watch pile. It's a shame that two of them weren't living up to what I hoped they would be, but you can't have everything. One out of three ain't bad. Um, Bite, I would probably rate maybe a, a four out of ten. And as I said, I would rate Dark Fry three out of ten. I would rate Lost After Dark probably a 6 out of 10, which is quite good actually because I've got really high standards when it comes to a, a good slasher film. There has to be something in there that makes me want to come back and watch this film again. So definitely if you're out there and you're a horror fan and you're thinking about picking one of these three up, definitely, I mean, as I said, judge judge book by its cover for yourself, but uh, I would recommend Lost After Dark to be the one to watch if you're wanting to see something that tries something a little bit different. Um, so as always thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe and if there's any movies out there that in fact what I might do is I might show in my next video a couple of movies which are on my to be watched pile and you guys can let me know which ones to watch next because it's really difficult trying to find which ones you want to watch when you've got a wee pile which is like building up and you keep trying to fish through and find the one to watch next but um, leave any comments below and obviously I love talking about films, I will get back to you. Please like and subscribe and as always, thank you so much for watching. Please take care.